And now for your listening pleasure, here's Polizzi and Rose, covering the week of media, marketing, and digital content news. This old marketing. Take it away, boys. And welcome to episode number 379 of This Old Marketing for Friday, June 9th. 2023. And with me, as always, as he always is, my friend, my colleague, and a guy who, well, let's just say he definitely didn't sell his soul to the Saudis for a bucket of golf balls, Mr. Joe Polizzi. <laughs> Ooh, that's uh, snarky. A that's little snarky. A little snarky. Hey, yeah. he, well, we're hey, going to talk way, a little bit about that. We yeah. will. We're going to talk about this. And by the way, we've not even mentioned it, but we're, we're like, on video for this like we're actually recording this and i'm gonna switch, yeah. watch this view i can switch all these views Boop. see i can do that Ooh, you're I fancy know. now you're fancy. <laughs> so the people listening are like we don't care yeah. we can't we can't see you uh yeah. what's it, it okay here i have a quick we, we're gonna talk about the whole live thing I'm, sure i'm glad you yeah. put it as part of the show flow uh yeah. what's the biggest difference for you moving from an audio only podcast to a video and audio podcast uh, Besides the fact that you have to like look at the screen now, yeah. Well, I, you know, and, and the and the funny thing is, I actually don't look at the screen. I actually, uh, I'm, what I'm doing. I weirdly, uh, I do keep the video off in a corner, um, so that I can Ooh. actually see you if you like hold up your hand or something. But um, I actually look at the camera. Um, so yes. and my camera is a little off center from uh, from the screen. So um, I think that reads better. Um, on the video. So that's a little bit different that I actually have to focus my eyes now, whereas <laughs> normally I could go to sleep during the show when you're talking. I know. And, well, and, you know, you know, as, so. as, in, as many people know, I was a big multitasker while you would do right, your, exactly. your rants or your raves and they could hear the, I yeah. get, that's the biggest comment. Like Joe, you know, we can hear your keyboard. I said, yeah, yeah. I know. I know, but it's only during when Robert talks. Right. So I did the clicky exactly. clack. <laughs> the key right board exactly um, and i'm a little more conscious now when i'm reading versus you know when i'm reading the the lead into the stories and, and and all that sort of thing and i'm conscious of the you know uh of of you know the i don't know the newbie nature of this whole thing and so trying to make it entertaining trying to make it visually interesting is a new thing it's fun i have to say that 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 part is really enjoyable trying to make this you know, I mean, you know, we've said before on this show, it's just two chuckleheads talking. So, but trying to make it visually interesting is now, <laughs> you know, an well, added complexity to chuckleheadedness. I, yeah, I don't know if it's any more interesting. I wonder, actually, what I'm really curious about is, do people notice a difference in the audio version? Like, is it any different at all? Is it the same show that we can just now see each other? Or I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm actually curious. The The biggest issue for me today is I had to figure out, well, what shirt and hat am I going to wear today? Because <laughs> normally it doesn't matter, right? right? I'm in right. whatever. You roll right, right out of bed. You do this very early your time. You're very nice That's correct. about it. Yeah. And but you always look the same. I don't know how you do it. I, you know, I have to put some thinking in. I got my Savannah Bananas hat on today. Oh, I put and, there's some thought. This this whole this whole thing doesn't just come. Uh, you know, you it, it, it takes <laughs> it takes a hot minute. I've got a whole team of makeup and hair people that uh, sort of that put all this together. No, I have no, I have nothing. I've I get up, I need I some coffee. I need some of that. I need some of the I cream. Heard. I need the bag baggy eyes thing because yeah. for some reason I woke up. It has nothing to do with the fact that I was out last night. I got yeah. these little things under my eyes. We should make it clear that you're not being paid by the Savannah Bananas with that hat on. You know, it's just, uh, it's no, just but a, this is a solid hat. I look. It is good a solid hat. hat. No, it's a, it's a, no, yeah. it's a solid hat. And I'm sure yeah. that came as there's a story behind that hat. I'm sure from. I want. Well, I be. I was a fan, obviously a fan of Jesse Cole. I want. I love. This is a so people can't see it, but this it's a trucker hat, and I love yeah. trucker hats with the mesh in the back. I have a yep. lot of them. I have a big problem. Uh, I see hats everywhere and I want to get them. Um, there's a rule. And I don't know if you know about the hat rule in the Polizzi house. Maybe you heard about this. Yeah. I have a similar I am one at that, in, in my house. Yeah. Yeah. I'm at, I'm at the hat limit. Uh, I don't know how many. Let's say 25. I have yeah. that many hats like in circulation right now. And if I want another hat, I have to drop a hat. 
So it's a very difficult. So when I go out and I see a hat that I want, I also have to think about the fact I'm going to be losing a loved one. Yeah. And um, and let me ask you a question. Do you, because I, I have probably, I don't know. I don't have 25, but I might, I might have, I might have 20. Um, and I have probably 10 of them at actual circulation. And this gets to my question, which is, yeah. do you have a set of hats that you don't wear because you're like, I can't wear this because I don't want to sweat into the brim and I don't want to. Oh, wanna, yeah. Yeah. You know, I have a couple that are that are there that don't get worn. I have a couple in the back that I, I really that that look better on the shelf than on my head. Let's right. put it same way. here. Same here. And, and you know, like classic when, Dallas Cowboys hat that I've, that I, that I have that looks awful. Like it's just horrible on my head, but I'm, I'm not getting rid of it because no, it's an amazing baseball cap. Of course not. Yeah. And there's an issue. I'm a golfer. So, I mean, I go out and golf in these hats and I sweat. And when you do that over and over again, you know, you get the mark in the hat sure. and it's, it's yep. when that, when that mark appears, it's, it's devastating for me as a hat person. It is. So then I actually, there's a process. They can be washed. They can, they can be, be washed. washed. And I have a washing product. I, I take them and I put the the little, uh, whatever the cleaner yep. is, right where the mark is. And I put them in the dishwasher. Yep. And then we air dry them as the whole thing. So there's a hat etiquette that, that we do. <laughs> we should do but, a whole episode on hat, on, on hat maintenance. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. I've learned a lot over the years because, uh, especially with, with these kinds of, if you do, a, if you do it wrong, if you have a little bit too much detergent on it or you keep it in the dishwasher a little too long, you will lose yeah. the hat. You will lose. And the I hat. have lost hats. And I can tell you that you, I mean, you don't remember the time because I think we were like within the days between shows, but I was devastated. It, it took me days to recover from the fact that I lost a couple really important hats to me. But I have to say this, once you put it into the dishwasher and you actually do the thing, it's never the same again. It's close it's like the matrix it's like a hat that's matrix. true it's like it, it's a thing yeah it's it's like virtual reality hat it's just not yeah. quite hat yeah they sh- um, they shrink they absolutely shrink they and they change shapes and things. you can re- you know it's a it's a it people don't understand i mean people who wear a lot of hats they understand but people don't really understand that you put it in that one that first time you clean it it's uh it, yeah. you know it, it's just as likely to come out ruined and clean by the way but ruined as it is to come out, you know, the way it was. So, yeah. so if anyone wants to get on my good side, <laughs> you can send me a hat. And there are a couple sponsors that we've had over the years, you know, working with, with CMI and, and content marketing world and whatever that they know. And they've, they've sent some nice tchotchkes to me, including the, the hat. And there's been a couple that have actually gotten the trucker hat thing. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I did that. I did. I, I I did that for um for for TCA for for my little consultancy. When when I made hats, uh, I did. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, not for TCA for Experience Advisors for my little community. When I made yeah. hats, I did the Carhartt uh, trucker hat um, because they're they're the best, right? Yes, they're the best. You can't you can't get better than than the trucker yeah. hat. And so, anyway, and I get nothing from Carhartt by the way for saying that. I just I'm just telling you the Carhartt trucker hats are amazing. No, it's a quality hat. There's no doubt yeah. about it. So anyways, back to the Savannah Bananas hat. You asked me six <laughs> minutes ago. Now right. I'm going to answer you. Right. Um, okay. I wanted, uh, I love what the Savannah Bananas are doing. Everyone knows that I've raved about them on this program. Jesse Cole's fans first book is great. I wanted the hat, ordered the hat. Uh, it came very quickly and it was, it says packed personally by some part of his name. It had a little thing in there and I got a sticker like right over my head right now. You can see the Savannah banana sticker on the wall. Yeah. I got that with it. And you know, now I'm a, I'm a lifer fan and I, I take this out as, as many times as I can Yeah, uh, to support, to support that. So yeah, yeah there, there's, there you go. there's that. And then I'm golf. I'm going to golf later today in this hat. So I'm taking a risk. Oh, Okay. I'm taking a risk. Right. I'm going to go out. It's a beautiful day today. And, you are, and we're gonna, you are nothing but an innovator, my friend. We're going to see nothing but an innovator. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Um, so anyways, yeah, uh, we have a, a new YouTube channel. Yeah, it's we do. this old marketing. I, Very I, original. I'm that I, nobody had taken that. But nobody, yes, right? I thought for sure yeah. somebody would land grab that. Wait a minute. YouTube. Is it, it, we don't have the URL, right? Because don't you have to have a certain number of subscribers before you get you get the privilege of of personalizing the URL? Or did I they had to, no, that? I had to just verify. 
you have to verify that you're a human being. So they oh, wouldn't okay. let me upload anything longer than like 15 seconds until I went and did the, <laughs> I have a verified channel. Right. Okay. And I used your fake passport to get the verified good. channel. Good, good, good. And uh, anyways, it's youtube.com slash. I've heard of that. I've heard of at that. this old marketing or this old marketing. Okay. And we, we have it. And I think we have, we have many more uh, followers, subscribers on my channel. I used to distribute it. I'll still do actually through, through my channel. My, I've got yeah. a couple thousand or something like that, but those people don't know to move over. Maybe they will now. So if you're watching this on the old YouTube channel, I want you to go to <laughs> this old marketing channel and then subscribe to that one and join the other 15 subscribers. That's right. That's that right. No, where we'll be, we're, we'll still be organically buried below, you know, 14 below Mr. Beast and the last Gary Vaynerchuk video and the last. Uh, oh, this is not, the, we're not hitting any records with this. Yeah, this is, that's right. This is supposed <laughs> to be um, a, a, a hard to find. Like we're, we're purposely making this difficult to find because Artisanal. we feel if we do that, yeah. it's more valuable for the few of yeah. you that actually get to see our pretty <laughs> faces. We are the artisanal podcast. That's for sure. <laughs> it's yeah. like, Oh no, no, please don't share it on social. Yeah. Like we exactly. don't want, we yeah. don't want more than a couple yeah. listeners we're the, on this. We're the it's bougiest too... show out there. Right. It yeah. Just, just so bougie. It's like, no, no, no. We're out there. It's, we're the band that you've never heard of. Right. So. <laughs> It's too it's too much pressure, right? We only yeah. want a handful of people that already uh, accept our faults, That's... <laughs> which are plentiful. <laughs> exactly. and, but they know us and they love us and it's okay. So anyways, exactly right. YouTube.com, This Old Marketing. And when we, first, we did the first show, this is our third one that we're yeah. doing. I said, don't say anything. Let's right? just go and see if anybody notices. You know what? Nobody, nobody noticed. Did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nobody yeah. It was nothing. It yeah. was it was not even crickets. It was yeah. crick. That was that was all we got. <laughs> it, it, well, <laughs> speaking right. of crickets, should we yeah. get to our show and talk yes. about what we're going to sure. talk about? Okay, Let's fantastic. We yeah. well, we do have a lot to talk about. It was a big, uh, you know. Let's say it was a big this old marketing news week. Lots of things that we were tweeted at. That uh, we find this week yeah. um, that we found interesting. Anyway, yeah. yes, fascinating stuff. But we will start, of course. Uh, with how we open the show, and we'll talk a little bit about the PGA Tour and how is it live or L I V or I, I'm, I'm a it's little it's live. Here. It rhymes with give. Okay, live, so the PGA live Tour, Tour and live the Saudi and, Arabian back. And you know, uh, do you know why it's you know why it's live? I don't. Do you know why it, it's because it's the Roman numerals for fifty four, and the live tour plays fifty four holes versus the seventy two holes of the PGA Tour. Well, there you go. Fifty four. All right. I, 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 you know how much research I had to do to find that little nugget. I, I learned, I learned something <laughs> that I absolutely did not need to know. There you, no, there you go. So, there I'm, you go. I'm but sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. That's all right. We'll talk about the merger and and what that might mean and why. And it is basically both a media story as well as a brand and marketing story. So it'll be an interesting one to talk about from that perspective. Then, of course, the big news this week coming out of Cupertino was the Apple Vision launch and their new uh, Vision virtual reality, augmented reality, whatever you want to call it, headset. And we'll talk about that. And something that came up during the middle of that that has now spread once again the nonsense uh, that Apple may purchase Disney. Would you we'll stop it? Don't, don't cloud the judgment. I'm just here. Before we I'm even. Ju I'm just asking questions, Joe. I'm just asking questions. That's you all did, I'm doing. I'm you just didn't just questions. ask a question. That's not journalism. When you put your opinion into <laughs> the, the, you're told, you're not a journalist. Well, you're yeah. not a journalist. I'm not. So there's definitely not a journalist. It, um, and then okay, we will talk ahead. about yeah. the fact that Elon, Elon, yes, our friend Elon Musk, has tweeted out that X or Twitter or something or somewhere or somehow uh, may now allow you to actually collect your subscribers and get their email addresses. And we'll Ooh. talk about the reality and the nonsense of that. Then if we've got time, we'll talk a little bit about Netflix and how they have now released their new gaming uh, strategy and some initial titles that may be coming through and the content and how that uh, may actually, uh, you know, be a little bit of uh, great content marketing or something like that in there. Possibly. And of course, we'll get to our rants and raves and not, of course, miss our wonderful Q&A where we've got a wonderful question to talk about. But when we get to rants and raves, we will. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a recent 
Sam Altman uh, interview where he talked about uh, ChatGPT5 and how they're not even thinking about doing anything with it. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And Joe, yes, he, I'm just asking questions. And of course, Tucker Carlson is just asking questions. And so Joe's going to talk about how much he loves Tucker's new show and um, on Twitter. And, gotta uh, do. We'll, yeah, we'll, gotta we'll gotta talk that. about about my friend Tucker. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's get All right. into this. Let's get into it and let's, let's talk about the PGA. So this let's comes courtesy it. of the New York Times. Oh, by the way, I have this... to I have to tell you before I put this article up, the New York yeah. Times blocked me because I'm not a subscriber. So you you talk about the New York Times one, but I'm going to put up a very similar uh <laughs> <laughs> very very similar fox business news we spare article. no expense here at which uh, shows old marketing ladies and gentlemen we have yeah. a huge research and development budget and so <laughs> um, <laughs> obviously can't even afford a, a subscription to the new york times uh and basically the headline here uh is that uh, you know as is on the screen um, but also uh here at the new york times is pga tour and live uh now they've agreed to an alliance ending golf's bitter fight uh the article opens up as many of them do and the ones certainly here do as well the pga tour the dominant force in men's professional golf for generations and live golf which made its debut just last year and is backed by hundreds of millions of dollars in saudi money will together form an industry powerhouse that is expected to transform the sport executives announced on tuesday basically the article goes on from here to talk about how really the once bitter enemies um and there was a whole really a situation where last year and we even talked about it on this show where the live golf played at uh, the, the trump golf course um yep. and did all sorts of things and and everybody really was just in up in arms about it the pga golfers were you know were basically told by pga that anybody who left pga to go play for live would now get uh, ostracized by the organization and now it seems well the, I guess they've made a deal with the devil here. Uh, not necessarily sort of, I'm not, I'm not making a political statement. I, I'm just saying basically the two enemies came together and decided to form a deal um, that seems to be much more about money than it does about ethics. And uh, really now the golfers, the PGA golfers are decidedly upset about all of this because now it seems like the live golfers who left PGA for the big paycheck can now just come back. And uh, could just come back. So, I don't know. What do you, what do you make of the for de- first of all? What do you make of the deal? And then and then is there something here around marketing and branding that sort of takes a you know takes a I, I have a take on that, but I get, I'd love to get your take on the deal. First of all, when I heard about the deal, my friend texted me when it came out, and I was shocked. I never. I guess I should have seen this coming, and we'll talk about why. But I I didn't expect this to happen with with the PGA commissioner coming out and saying never ever will live players play sure. again. You've made the decision. You are now fully ostracized. We're never going to talk to you again. Uh, yeah. And then you've you've had players go at each other, especially on social media, back and forth. And right. then even when they come together in the major tournaments where they're they're all allowed to play, uh, there there's a lot of animosity going on. Well. You had the loyalty of the the PGA folks against these oh all these the paydays of the the live golfers that went out there and and who was it Cameron Smith one of the Cam Smith one of the mm. top golfers that made the move major um, major championship winner for the PGA went over to live and said flat out said this is life changing money he's like I can't I can't say no to this I'm gonna right. go and I'll play on the live tour for a year or two and I'm set the rest of my life. Uh, be- and also because the live tour that you 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 get a payday every event that you play, you are not cut. Like in, in the PGA right. tournament, if you don't play well the first two uh, two times out, you're cut. You don't get any money. Not That's true right. with the live tour. Uh, even in the first year, they had something like 400, 405 million to for purses. The purses are so huge. Um, and anyways, so yeah. This seemingly all came together. I've looked at uh, at this thing, and this com- flat out comes down to money. And what's interesting is uh, apparently, you know, we don't have all of the details yet, as you know, Robert. But the the PGA Tour itself will stay a nonprofit, but they have uh, will create this separate entity, which is a for profit version. That's right. And the for profit version will be overseen by. Uh, 
basically the live tour the the people who are right. running the saudi uh tour the public, right now. The, the public investment fund yeah as they call it the, the, the pif the, the right PIF. which is there which is basically the you know the giant the fund pit. that the saudi royal family has that basically they you know it's called the public but let's be honest it's for a very specific part of the public so yeah well so just let's just i did a little bit of research because you know this is what we do on this show <laughs> and i tried to figure the pif the public investment fund has yeah. uh, 620 billion dollars in it yeah. and i was trying yeah. to get a feel for okay let's look at the largest companies in the world and what they have cash on hand and the and apple is the the company that has the most cash on hand in the world that i can find right now um and that's 200 they have 202 billion dollars so the PIF has three times the amount of cash on hand that Apple does, and that enables them to to buy this thing. Um, and I don't know, you've been around nonprofits a lot. There's there's a number of nonprofits out there who have basically funneled off a for profit entity because exactly. there's an opportunity well, with a sponsor yes. or multiple sponsors. That's right. So that's what happens. So you have. They're trying to say the PGA will remain intact the way it is, pure, whatever. The live golfers will come back. And now you've got this money-making machine with really not a lot of restrictions on it that the PIF is tied to. And is there anything that can't be bought? That's the question. Yeah, yeah. And, and make no bones about it. This is move number, I don't know. 27 it just happens to be the one that has has found the the widest uh the the widest exposure from the mainstream media right now but this is move this is not the first move that the the royal family has made as an investment uh into sports entertainment oh for, yeah um, newcastle you know uh they yeah they bought the they've bought football Premier. teams you know um and then they've also uh they've bought sort of uh, entertainment companies Th this is truly so the royal family for a long time has known that they need to pivot out of oil right because oil is going away as a profit center um, not only from an economic standpoint of demand but also literally a supply as well and so they've they've got a long term they've got a long 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 horizon on investment and they're starting to make moves into diversifying their portfolio yeah into other things and entertainment and media. So this is not, this is not the first and it certainly will not be the last. And the real question is, is, is from my perspective, I mean, the, the, the meme going around, which I absolutely adore is that this is literally the Michael Scott paper company buying, you know, when he got acquired by Duff, Dunder Mifflin, right. And that negotiation where Michael Scott's literally saying, my company is worth nothing, but I have <laughs> tons of names. I can make a new company and a new company and a new company and a new company. And they finally look at him and go, okay, how much do you want? Right. And I mean, that's, yeah. that's it, right. It's, they can launch, you know, tomorrow, the Saudi, I mean, with 600 billion, by the way, this is a drop. And even if this is hundreds of millions of this dollars, not, the BGA, this is nothing. It's a yeah. drop in the bucket into their fund. They could tomorrow go launch a competitor to the NBA and do a similar thing. They could theoretically, I think it would be harder, launch a competitor to the NFL, do the same thing. They could launch a competitor to UFC. They could launch a competitor to whatever that really, whatever business they want to go in, they just launch a competitor, throw a lot of money at it, basically throw tons of money at it so that players want to go, uh, you know, get out of that business and force the hand of whoever it is, is the, is the dominant player in that space to either then acquire or invest with the, you know, with, with the, with the, uh, with the Royal family. And so it's, it's a fascinating move uh, from a branding perspective in golf. I mean, look, golf is already in a world of hurt. Golf is a declining sport, um, both in how many people, how many young people are playing it, watching it, et cetera. The PGA has been struggling for years to get viewership up and to get young people interested in playing golf. Maybe they can start to work here and do what you're talking about and turn, you know, turn professional golf into, you know, ultimate fighting championship where everybody gets paid and there's more things yeah. and there's, you know, more different kinds of plans and sort of get out of the old school PGA. But boy, do I, 
do I see this going south fast? I could definitely see this thing going south fast. I don't know. I don't see it going south fast. Um, yeah, maybe not. Maybe I'm, I, I, I definitely I think, could be wrong. I don't know that much about it. I think that what this tells me, I mean, in, in relation to this show, I, I just see the fact that there's such an imbalance of funding, let's put it that way, from these the elites <laughs> right. of the elite right. companies, the elite of the elites come the, the, the Apples, the Microsoft, the Googles. Uh, if you go to the you type in cash on hand public companies, those companies come up and you see the <laughs> right. amount of money they they can go and buy influence anywhere. Yes. And exactly. there's nothing to stop it unless somebody says no. And they were in a meeting and somebody said, you know, I got five billion reasons why you should have this conversation with me after right. the initial response was no, never, no, maybe, I don't know. What do you look at? Yes, absolutely. Let's do this. I mean, that's exactly what, what happened with that conversation. It's a little scary. This is one thing. It's, it's just a marker in time, if you will. And we'll come back to this in six months and we'll see something else happen where a large entertainment or technology company will oh. go ahead and buy something where you'll say, hmm, because they're all getting into the conglomerate business. Oh, yeah. They're, I mean, and that and we'll did. talk about Apple in a little bit. A a Apple's Apple's going yes. to have their hands and already in a lot of cases do into every piece of the economy because yes. honestly, they have to. That's they right. they are an economy in and of themselves, and right. and I love your point about the diversification of um for Saudi uh, for the oil away from the Saudis. I mean that's it's a smart business decision, and they've oh, been going after sports and entertainment decision. for a while. So absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's and and they're you know you can argue with the hypocrisy, you can argue with the ethics, you can argue with yeah. This is not a political statement. Thing. This is the, but the business aspect of this the way that they're doing it by creating a competitor, funding it, disrupting the space, and then basically saying, Hey, what are we, you know, we're, we're just competing here. If you'd like to, if you'd like to be a co-investor with us, we'd love to do it. It forces the hand of the, of the, whatever dominant player is in the space. Mark my words, they will buy an NBA team here. Not, not, uh, in, in not too, uh, not too distant future. Or no, the, if they were going to do the strategy again, which worked really well, they will create a rival league. Right. And maybe. They, yes. There's and that they, as well. Because they have enough well. money to say, I mean, it's not a, LeBron, yeah. but five, up, five other, NBA, 10 other. Yeah. This, yeah. The structure of M NBA, MLB, and NFL are a little different than PGA. So, you know, they're not nonprofits and, and all of that. So it's a it's a little different, but it, but, it is a uh, little yeah. different. But yeah, yeah, so so yeah, so maybe they just go the traditional route, but they don't have to because they literally have unlimited funds. They yeah. they can do whatever they want to do. And it's 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 just interesting how quickly the PGA changed their tune. Yeah, on this thing it's and amazing. went this direction. Yeah, it's, so it's amazing. Yeah, and I, so I think it will affect a lot of other decisions. I think you're going to see a lot of companies point to this and say, "Hey, look at that!" And <sighs> maybe, yeah. yeah, we could totally redefine culture <laughs> and 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 in this area, we uh, could get in on that too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and why not? Well, and well not? speaking of 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 unlimited funds and getting into the other businesses that have not seemed so uh, great of late, well. Here we go with Apple. Uh, this week was their Worldwide Developers Conference, and they had a lot to announce. So much got buried, and we won't actually have time to talk about it on the show today, but there was a new OS announced, and there was new, uh, uh, you know, new hardware announced, but yeah. mostly the new hardware announcement centered on the Apple Vision Pro. And the article that we'll cover comes to us courtesy of Ars Technica, where uh, basically it's a first person reporting of someone who was there and said, this is the best headset demo I've ever seen, but there may be room for improvement. That seems to be sort of the overall consensus by those who were there is, is that eh, maybe it seems to be the headline. Basically, the article opens up by saying, going into the Vision Pro demo at Apple's WWDC conference, I wasn't sure what to expect. The keynote presentation, which showed everything from desktop productivity apps to dinosaurs circling a Vision Pro users in space, seemed impressive, but augmented reality promotional videos often do. They depict the seamless experience in which elements of a digital space merge with the user's actual surroundings completely, 
And when you do actually put on the headset, though, you'll often find that the promotional video was pure aspiration and reality has some catching up to do. That was my experience with HoloLens and has been that way with consumer AR devices like Nuriel, too. But basically, uh, that was not my experience, he says, with Vision Pro. To be clear, it wasn't perfect, but it was the first time I've tried an AR demo and thought, yep, that's what they showed in the video was pretty much how it really works. The article goes on to then talk about eh, all the details and what you need to do, stick a battery in your pocket, put it on. Um, this matches a number of the reviews that I saw uh, around the web, which basically said really interesting, good, comfortable, uh, very impressive uh, demo at first. Everybody ouched at the price. Uh, the social media world is a flutter with either two sets of opinions. One is basically $3,500 is way too much for this thing. And how dare they? And all, you know, their usual sort of reaction to an Apple price um, increase. And then the other reaction was, no, 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 just wait. This is the pro version. If it does well or if it starts to even get any traction, you'll see the SE version or the consumer yeah. version or the lower price version next year. Um, and uh, but then you had some who were saying basically, ah, eh, this is this is no better than what really Facebook has been doing or any of the other headsets. Basically, this is not something that consumers want. And so I wonder where after watching and seeing and reading all that you've read, Joe, where where do you come down on the VR, AR headset idea <clears throat> just generally. And then what do you think about Apple? I always, well, and you know, I'm a, I'm a lover of uh, Ready Player One and, and yes. reading that and then somewhat watching the movie, but more reading it, I could absolutely believe that we could escape into different worlds and do whatever metaverse. And, and, and I think that's Facebook's play was with the metaverse and gaming and VR, but after reading this article and, and reading some of the other articles out there, it's obvious that this is this is a total AR augmented reality yes. play, and it is different. And that's where hats off to Apple on this and just, just didn't, didn't say we're going to come out with yeah. a competitor to what Facebook is doing in Oculus or whatever is Quest now. Right. It's called Quest yeah. or whatever. That's right. Yeah. Um, they said we, we're we're going to change the the way that people communicate like we did with the iPhone and the iPod. And the, I think it sounds like they've done it. And I, the price tag didn't, I saw the price tag and it's, that seemed right. It's, it's like, yeah, this is a luxury product. Yeah. They're going to test it's it a out computer on, the on your face. Market. Basically. It's a, it's a whole computer on your yeah. face. It, it's, and if you, if you look at the, at what it costs to, to buy an, an Apple pro and all the other, the 17 pro plus this, that, and the other, it's right in the middle of the ballpark of everything else that they do. Uh, it doesn't doesn't have to be for everyone, but I think that's where it's a it's almost like a new it's a new do de new desktop, new computer device, ex extension of yourself. Use it multiple different ways. Um, I think all it's missing right now is the is the content to feed into that and the software and the program, which will absolutely and come. that's the point, right? That's the point of this whole thing is to inspire developers to start making yeah. stuff for it, right? Yeah. I mean, I think the, re the real interesting part to me and, and not getting covered very much, I have to say, is the fact that it is both, right? That there is a dial on the side of the headset that allows you to change the opacity of the, of the glasses themselves so that you can either use it for augmented reality or turn it all the way up where everything goes dark and it becomes yep. a screen for a movie or a, a video game or, or something like that. The fact that it's both an AR headset and a, a VR headset is the most interesting thing to me that nobody's really talking about, which basically says, if you're sort of cynical about it, that Apple is hedging their bets, not knowing which way the real use cases will go. In other words, will it go to gaming or, you know, they, have, they, of course, like every VR headset showed some healthcare medical doctor, you know, doing something virtually yep. and, and all that kind of stuff. But will it go that way where you actually use it for, a, you know, going into VR worlds or playing video games or watching a movie or a television show in sort of the sort of uh, full, full sense around sound? And then or will it go the AR way, which is where you either play games or make more useful things about where you look around and you can, you know, see a, a recipe on their left side of your head while you're making dinner or something like that, which is seems a little 
you know, given the size and the, 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 the fashion statement that you would simply be making, it seems a little longer in the tooth, but I, I think it's a fascinating experiment and I think it's an interesting, and I think it's way too early to tell. I mean, because we, when, when the iPhone first came out, I remember when the iPhone very first came out, there were all sorts of cynics saying it doesn't have a keyboard like the Blackberry. Yeah. Nobody will ever want to type on the screen. No one will ever use the typing this way. It's a, the wrong form factor. People can't hold it with two hands. I mean, there was all sorts of things. We just didn't know how to use it yet. We didn't, and, and then, of course, it became a huge hit. And it was also super expensive uh, back in the day you know, when, when, the, when the iPhone first came out. So I, I think it's way too early to tell here on anything uh, having to do with whether or not it'll be successful or not. But, but I think it'll all come down to whether or not developers can actually make stuff that is compelling. The content will, again, as it always does, the content will drive the, uh, the, the, you know, the expansion of the hardware. Are you going to purchase one? Probably not because I don't, I'm not a developer and I don't have any interest in developing any content for that. And so it would be literally a $3,500 toy for me. And I don't, I, I've, I haven't enjoyed the VR experiences that I've had. Um, you know, it, they're, they're fine. Um, and the AR stuff seems to me to be much more of a, and, and I just, I'm not a headset kind of guy i mean i hate even wearing these things to be honest um so You're talking about ear earbuds my ear earbuds yeah. yeah yeah you and pointed so, so people I, here i know you. i know i need to remember Good. that we're on video and both and <laughs> but, um, yeah um anyway uh the idea there being that uh yeah I, I i don't think i'll be purchasing but i could i absolutely will see this I, you know, I give it a better than 60% chance of success. I'll put it that way. I mean, because I, I just think Apple has thought this through. I think that that's one of the things that I've thought this through. I would, it, it, it feels not that Walmart's decision was the best in the world, but Walmart, I remember when Walmart stayed away from e-commerce for a long time until they felt like they had the right solution. And now yeah. they're doing just fine today uh, with online uh, purchases. But I think the same thing is here. They didn't just jump in. There is a lot here. Uh, the yeah. technology is there. It's very interesting. I think. And I'll I think as here. I think as well. One of the other things that we should consider is that this may never become a widely used consumer product, right? And it could still be successful. You know, in, in, in the early days of Mac computers, remember their big market was education, right? It, it was all you know. There, where where you used a Mac computer was in design schools and, and, and other, you know, uh, higher, you know, colleges and those sorts of things. Cause that was their big, that was their big market. So it could very well be that this is a more B2B type of device where schools, hospitals, doctors, dentists, you know, people who really will need something like this and can use it for very specific use cases will will buy these and it can become a very you know a server like product rather than sort of a computer like product what did you think of uh of disney's involvement in the uh in the unleashing of of well the it's new... funny that you it's funny that you mentioned that joe is um, it I, yeah was it I, I i i don't know how many messages you got but i got a few on that so for uh for those of you who 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 have no idea what we're talking about um Bob Iger, who is the current CEO of Disney, was one of the featured guests at the WWC event and talked a lot about the Disney content that could be made available through the Vision Pro uh, and actually demoed some such uh, where Mickey Mouse was. I think it was Mickey Mouse, wasn't it? Made an appearance in the living room and it looked really cool and interesting in an AR sort of environment. Um, so prompting a gajillion people to reach out not only through social media, but to actually email and, and, and all of that, yeah. both Joe and I to su suggest that once again, once again, for the 19 billionth time in the last 10 years that the two companies could be talking about acquisition. Um, and basically there was a Twitter thread that we'll link to in the, in the show notes here that really speaks to this, where John Ehrlichman mm -hmm. basically had a whole thread about, how uh, talking through seeing C CEO Bob Iger on stage at Apple's big event was interesting. 
because he was the connective tissue between Disney and Apple. He had, was the one who mended fence with Steve Jobs. Um, He's dressing like Steve Jobs. Look at look at him on. I mean, people can't see this, but it's it's unbelievable, yeah. uncanny. How he's yeah. trying to pull off. Well, the... he's in his he's in his little best sweater vest there and the whole thing. He looks, and, uh, he you looks know, wonderful. Uh, he looks wonderfully yeah. happy to be the glue that brings these two amazing brands together. Anyway, because... so many people said then suggested to us that this could <laughs> definitely signal the idea of Apple's going to acquire Disney. Once again, I think that is nonsense. Joe Polizzi, let me know why you disagree. I think the now that at some point uh, we're going to have a steak dinner over this. And, and I, I mean, I, at some point I get to collect. I don't know how long I have to wait. This is a 10 year bet. And I don't know how long I have to wait to collect. The, the reason I, I believe that the reason that Bob Iger came back was specifically to get this deal done. And it's the one thing that he wanted to do. And he didn't do in, in his first residency as the CEO of, uh, of Disney and now residency now, now <laughs> like coming a, back like to a make Vegas good, make good on, on the, yeah. on the vision that he's always had. And I mean, if you put, um, if you put these two companies together, they're both better. That's the difference. It's not like one would take over. So. If you merge I don't think these that's two, true. I, I absolutely really believe that's true. true. Yeah. And especially with what you said, I'll use your framework here. Uh -oh. You talked about the importance of content in driving this new Vision Pro device. That's and if right. in the next five to 10 years, the Vision or the Vision Pro or Double Vision or whatever you end up calling it <laughs> is, is, the, is the new product, is the interface for the rest of the world, they're yeah. going to need amazing content experiences. And who is better in the world at delivering amazing content experiences than Disney? Probably nobody. So, so bringing those two together, and I'm I'm want to mention a couple things. First of all, we mentioned that Apple has over two hundred billion dollars of cash on hand, just sitting around, just sitting around doing a bunch of nothing. Wouldn't that wouldn't it be great to put that to work? Uh, Disney right now uh, was valued at over 300 billion is now down to around 170 billion dollars so they could buy it with uh, with couch cushion money well there's it's enough not quite couch cushion yeah it's not quite couch cushion money the point is that. is that the the, yeah. the economics could be there the problem is uh, the regulatory structure of the US right now oh well there's there's i mean that's is, i mean that's just the biggest one issue. in a list of things right i mean there's but that's also... the big but that's the biggest issue yeah. especially we didn't well, this is not any part of the show here but the SEC going after Binance and Coin, specifically Coinbase yeah and really laying down hard uh and trying to regulate through enforcement um is is it, it's silly in my opinion, but they're doing it. And so the environment for this um, is not a good one to make this thing happen. So the, the, you're going to have to wait until 24, 25, if, if it e eases up at all, which I think we've yeah. come to a head with this kind of, I have nothing good to say about Gary Gensler, who's leading the SEC right now, but that's a, that's a different discussion. But anyways, that's yeah. that that's yeah. the biggest obstacle to this thing going. I think the uh, investors of Apple and Disney would both approve this if the numbers were right. I don't think the investors of Apple would improve this. I think the investors of Disney would be over the moon for this. Why? But I, I, Why? It's they've done it before. It fought. They bought other uh, brands. Not at this scale. Not, not at this scale. The, the last time Apple made an acquisition of this scale was when? Like ever? No, there's not. There's because there's never been an acquisition of this size anywhere. This would be the biggest acquisition in the history of acquisitions. Mm, I'm not sure that's true. It would be in it would be over two hundred billion dollars. Has there been another acquisition larger than that? I don't maybe think so. not. Maybe not. I, I, AOL I, Time Warner. What was that? Something like that. When I was okay. like, I think that was 80 or 90, something like yeah. that. So it, it, anyways, one of the top five, it would be, it would be yeah. huge. It would be huge. It would be huge. And I just don't think it's, I don't, I think it's too unwieldy. I really do. Not unless they stripped out a lot of the, a lot of the business and basically said, we're only going to buy the streaming business or we're going to buy the content business or we're going to buy, because I don't think Apple wants the parks. I don't think they want the, you know, that there's just too much. I, I just don't think that, ah, I just don't see Why? Because I, I Apple's not in the entertainment business. Yeah. I don't, Apple I don't, I don't see it. Business. I don't see it. 
I still don't see it. I still don't see it. Yeah. Yeah, because because when you go into an Apple store, it is not a fully immersive content experience. And oh, they don't appreciate those types of in-person experiences. Is that oh what you're trying God. to tell me? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, listen. Right. This is a good since since somebody's got to get paid. This is a great place for us to segue to our wonderful sponsor. We have a lovely, wonderful sponsor that is in a meta way, not only something that is sponsoring us, but also what we're using to actually create the sponsor. We are sort of actually thing. using, yeah. I know we're, we're StreamYard has enabled us to actually do this thing seamlessly. The easiest yeah. way to create content right in your browser, which we're doing right now, you can multi-stream yeah. to your social media platforms, which we do. We, uh, right. we stream to, to LinkedIn and, uh, and send it over to YouTube and we can, we could host a show with guests if we wanted to. We could create webinars if we wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want, but we don't we want do, guests. We don't want to do that, by the way, because we don't. So the PR people, please stop sending all of those. Just go watch and see wow. how many guests we've had on this show and just realize exactly, that, yeah, Exactly. And, and what's great is we record the podcast for audio. We distribute that. We can record it as a video. Uh, we can do it in the cloud. Uh, we can do it as local recording. It is, uh, it's amazing. I mean, I, it's let's put it this way, Robert. I am not the most technologically savvy person. That is everyone who listens true. to this knows that, right? I cannot be more true about this. It did not take me long to figure this whole thing out. That's right. So you can do all the live streaming, the webinars, the screen sharing. Uh, you know, when we put up the news shows, StreamYard makes it simple to get professional and polished content done every time. Sign up today and get a free trial and lifetime discount through this old marketing Ooh. and the tilt. And there you can do that by going to streamyard.com slash the tilt streamyard.com slash the tilt. And that is compliments of Streamyard and this old marketing and the tilt. And we are very excited to have them as a sponsor. And uh, yeah, so that's been just, just wonderful the whole way around. So, you know, it's, I All think that the easy, the best thing for me is the fact that now we, it, it goes into one format. Uh, I can easily yeah. take that and distribute it anywhere we want to. Uh, we've got the audio feed. It, there's not a lot of post-production work. So Well, and it gives you all those raw files, right? I mean, oh, so yeah. I can download my audio. I can download your audio. I can download my video. I can download your video. We can download joint video, joint audio. It gives you all those files. So that if you wanted to do something later that was just clips or just audio clips or just video clips or even video, you know, without audio, it's, it's all right there for you. I could take the (laughs) entire show and remove you. Well, that's always been the case. That's that's really, (laughs) and you could do that with me as well. That's right. You might say, yeah, it would be, it would be half as long and half as good. But yeah. there you go. It would be. Yes. We are, we're definitely better together. So we'll just, yeah. we'll keep it one. But if we ever decided to remove one another, we could do that too. So we could. You. Thank you. We thank could. you, StreamYard, for supporting Streamyard. this old yes, marketing. Absolutely. All right. All right. Let's get back to uh, our stories here. And the last story that we'll cover here uh, under the show before we get to our Q&A section is a quick one that we can talk about because, of course, our good friend, Elon, this is not a musky scent segment, although it would be almost perfect for the uh, the wonderful uh music that we had here but but basically uh elon over the weekend um really tweeted out this interesting thing that said uh, not over the weekend just a couple days ago actually um this platform unclear what this platform is in his tweet i think twitter email addresses of subscribers who opt in to content creators so the creators are able to leave this platform easily and take their subscribers with them if they want uh this of course as you might expect with joe and my common and often ranting about rented land versus owned land uh caused a lot of folks to tweet at us email us again i got so many dms on this one um just saying basically hey what do you think about all of this um i I, my headline which was (laughs) the the irony of all of this joe was basically i tried to repeat uh reply to a few of them with some funny gifs uh, and couldn't because Twitter is so now completely broken that doing a GIF now is almost impossible. It takes literally 15 minutes to upload a simple GIF from their own platform, by the way. I'm not like uploading some separate file. I'm using the GIF button in the tweeting 
interface to actually do something and I couldn't get it done. One of them I had to delete. The other one finally did go through after about 20 minutes. Anyway, the whole point being. Tell us how you really feel. Yeah. Well, I just think this is nonsense. I think that he's not even going to begin to do this because a, he, I mean, (laughs) I was about to say it's unethical, but the, 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 you know, the, if it's, if he did it ethically, it could only be a going forward thing. In other words, you would That's have true. to then you you would only be able to do it for any new subscribers coming in because then you could offer them the ability to opt into stuff, or you could do something where you actually add go add in an option into your you know user preferences and say, oh, I want to opt into letting my email be visible, which nobody will do. Um, and so, basically he would have to do the opposite of what Apple did, which, you know, Apple of course went in and said, basically you're, you're opted out by default and then you can go opt in if you want to, it would be kind of, he'd have to do that. He'd have to actually go in and create something and then basically either opt you in automatically. And then you have to go opt out, which would be completely unethical, or he would have to do what Apple did, which is go in and say, you can opt into subscribers, which nobody in their right mind will do. And so this is a completely non-starter unless you look at it as a going forward thing where you sort of offer up a product where you can do kind of like what Spotify did with the acquisition of Anchor FM and, and all of that, where you create a separate product that is somehow integrated that allows you to do content creator like things like create a show or create audio, et cetera, separately in a separate kind of tweet or whatever X is going to be. And then, offer up the ability to create a subscription list off of that. So I, I just think this is, you know, this is, this is a, te- this, I don't even know why he did this. There, there, there must've been something that tweaked him to, to tweet this out, but for the attention that it would get, but it, it just seems to me like such a non-starter. It's well, it's, it's, it's his own version of research, throw it out there, see what happens, get lots of positive. Everyone loves this. This is great. Yep. Uh, uh, Elon is, is the man of the people, according to all the replies you look on the, right. on the tweet that that went out. So, uh, so there, yeah, I think it's, I think it's absolutely possible if they decide to do it. You're right about moving forward. You can't go back and say, oh, anybody there. And he's not talking about followers. He's talking about subscribers. To your point, this is a, be a new thing, a different thing. Your newsletter, your special media feed, right. whatever your product is that people can subscribe to. And it's not much different than what Substack does. Substack right. has the same thing. It's like, hey, well, yeah, you can be part of this community. But if you decide at some point that you want to port your email subscribers out, they had to follow the opt-in process to get there, and then you'd move that out. And if you move that into a different platform, you already have them opted in. Uh, can't spam, GDPR, whatever the case is, is already appropriate and set. So I don't think it's that's an incredibly that's an incredibly important distinction to make, my friend, because it, it, it is a it, if you know, and there's really not a lot of productive use in parsing his words because his words are so. Um, sloppily used but basically if you do parse the words he says subscribers not followers in That's other right. words if you so it, it suggests that there will be some way of saying when you go follow someone you could actually not just follow them but actually subscribe so that would be the new feature it theoretically um and and basically if by the way if you look at his tweet um it says subscribe yeah it absolutely it absolutely says subscribe if we look at it right here boom it says subscribe subscribers uh creators that want to be on this platform they want to leave they can take their subscribers with them so yeah i i think don't click click through to the i mean the actual tweet that i'm looking at i'm looking at twitter.com um it's interesting that you don't see it there no Uh, that's fascinating i'm only seeing elon's tweet right now so when i look at elon's tweet on twitter the button does not say follow elon because i do not follow him um if i click on his profile i get a follow button but in that tweet it actually says subscribe well i'm i'm also not logged in over here ah okay so that's why you're seeing a different gotcha i, I don't want anybody following me around like yeah, i don't there you go there you go <laughs> 
Well, that's why I, that's why I use cash when I go out too. There you go. Well, want... I'm just telling you when you go to his pro when you go to that tweet and you're logged in, I'm actually seeing a subscribe button where where you would normally see follow. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, okay. We'll 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 see where go. It if you look at what I guess the the thing it made me think of was LinkedIn. So if I I have followers on LinkedIn, but I have a smaller set of subscribers and those subscribers are only set up to get my newsletter and they get that via email and you can subscribe and unsub. Now, right now, as far as I know, LinkedIn will not let me port those subscribers out, but take everything. Let's say you took that exact same thing and you move it to, to Twitter. It's not unprecedented. Be fairly easy to do. You just have to go ahead and check the box and I opt in to receive this and you're you're ready to go. You're good to go. So it by just, the way, I just the, I just clicked through to subscribe to Elon Musk. Yeah. <clears throat> this is fascinating. I we're learning this in real time. I just I just clicked on subscribe to Elon Musk and it says you can I can subscribe to Elon Musk for four dollars per month. Oh. And I can get bonus content. I get bonus content and then I get, uh, so you're, you're probably so opting up, up in. There's a statement there. There you go. Well, so he's no, already done it. it. it you no, were no, no. putting him down. He no, already no, here's, here's did the it. Thing. Here's the, here's the thing. Uh, so uh, literally as we, as we speak, I'm, I'm clicking through to this as I'm reading this, uh, this is good radio, by the way. This is right. Yeah, this it's it says subscribe radio. four dollars per month. I'm not. It's a really weird interface. I don't know if I'm subscribing to Elon Musk or if I'm actually subscribing to have the ability because the features it says is I can get my own public subscriber badge that makes it easier to get noticed, chat and connect. Oh, yeah. I see. No, 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 no. What? I, oh, I get it. I am subscribing to Elon Musk and then I would get a tag under my name that says I'm actually a subscriber. Of Elon. Okay. Of Elon, got it. So then, the, so then, as a Elon, the creator, yeah, I don't know if have this is preferential feature pre- or not. Yeah. Specific differentiated content going to that group of people, who That's right. and you could probably either charge for it or gate it. It's, yeah, it's not. not you know, when we get to rants and raves, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about it because there might okay. be something there. So fantastic. There you go. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's quickly get to our wonderful question. We had a great, co- eh, not really a question, more of a comment for you, really, more than anything else. Oh yes, let's um, let's let's go the, ahead and the, uh, make this yeah. this happen. And this is from uh, content, from content Michelle Peterson queen. Clark. Let's let's go ahead and play this. Yeah. Hey, Robert and Joe, it's Michelle here, your favorite content marketing queen. Now, I don't want you to think that I should change my name to Karen, but Joe, I have to tell you, it's Premier League, not. Premier League. It's not a movie premiere, it's Premier. So when you're talking about Ted Lesso this week, because Robert will have watched it now, can you please say Premier League? And the other thing is that Josh was listening last week and he said to me, why are they talking about it like it's a real show? <laughs> like a real team. And it's really... Um, you know, it's it's really what's uh, happening in the uh, Premier League, which is really funny. But we love listening and love the show, as you know. Bye. Well, thank you, uh, Michelle. Yes. Uh, first of all, Premier, pre- right? Premier, not Premier. Premier. That's correct. League. Yeah, Premier, Premier League. League. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I ju- look at Michelle. I just figured out offsides. Yeah. So you have to be patient with me, <laughs> Premier. I now I'll get it. I'll work on it. Premier League. Now yeah. it's also pronounced lasso. It's not lasso. <laughs> lasso. It's not lasso. <laughs> it's la. <laughs> it's lasso. Yeah. And to your final comment, it absolutely is a real team. So you let's just put the kibosh on that. And that's a lot of and, and people in other countries. You may not be aware, Michelle, don't realize that it's actually thing. Us in America, we all know that it's real. That's right. Because why it's wouldn't all real. it be? And I it's, have, of course, it's all. Right. I have, I have a Nike AFC Richmond uh, hoodie that tells me it's real. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Just like my they Savannah bananas it. hat. The Savannah they, bananas they, are real. They I would have not make it if it weren't real. Piece of wardrobe that shows this to be true. I don't know if you have any comment. It was really more for me. It was Robert, really, it was really all about you. I think it was really all about you. I did, Michelle, I, thank and, you. but to, but to, but yes, <laughs> but Michelle, I did actually watch the last episode and. 
I, you know, I would rave all over it. I, I think it, it is, it, it, it is such, I'm sad to see it go. If only because we so need shows like this right now. We, we show, good so need shows that yeah. are devoid of cynicism and just negativity. And you know, yes, it is saccharine sweet. That show is saccharine sweet and I don't care. I love it. I loved it for every non sort of controversial moment of it. It was just, it was wonderful. I, I loved every happy making moment of it. So yeah, it's great. And it ended well. I think it ended. They did, very a, good, they did a really good job with the final yeah. episode. And, they did. and as you know, Robert, I don't watch a lot of series. Uh, I have never watched game of Thrones. I've never, I mean, you, you name them for the most part. Sure. I've never watched an episodic uh, series except uh, Ted Lasso. I have watched and i enjoyed every minute of ted lasso yeah. uh yeah. so good i and and uh i guess i'll say uh real quick do you think there's going to be a spinoff is is there oh, anything almost 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 okay. assuredly yes okay. almost assuredly. Well, who's the character if i had to guess uh it would be uh, unfortunately i think it might be keely but but uh, i I, I don't know. Literally, I, I think it's going to be Roy or, Roy or Rebecca. Roy or Rebecca. Yeah, I'm not sure there would be a, 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 a spinoff because I don't think they would make it about the team. I mean, how many think... how, how many d- times was this discussed about Seinfeld? Is there going? Oh to yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it was so crazy. I think it's going to be the same. I, I, I think a long term. Yeah, it enough. may not be. They're just yeah. going to. Now leave that I'm thinking go. about it, they may not. They may not because it would have to be about the team, and at least the team would have a play a play a role there. So. Um, all right, let's very quickly get to our rants and rave sections. But before we do that, get on over to this old marketing.site where, of course, we've got all our show notes. We've got all of the other episodes that you can listen to and now uh, watch um, on our YouTube channel. So get over to our YouTube channel, as Joe mentioned in the beginning, to actually subscribe to all of that. You can also at the website do things like subscribe to the Tilt, which, of course, is Joe's amazing newsletter, where, of course, you can get the wonderful deal on StreamYard. And also, you can join our little Experience Advisors community, which is at experienceadvisors.io, and join us there and get into all the wonderful things that do uh, amazing things for customer experience. And of course, of course, as Michelle did, you can send us voicemail, you can send yes. us a question, you can send us all those things. We love getting those, so please do send and us I a learned voicemail. And I learn play them. I like it yeah. worked. This it's, is fantastic. Yeah. We will put you on the show we and put you at on least 15 yeah. people will hear you. That's right. Exactly. I promise you. There's all of that. Uh, all right. So now it's time for our rants and rave section. And uh, we'll very quickly go through this here. And I have commentary, but you want to talk about Tucker Carlson. I just, Why don't yeah, you I, I, this first? is real, real quick. Let me, let me throw this up uh, so you can see, cause I want to get your feedback on there he is. Oh, Mr. Tucker Carlson he always on looks Twitter. So concerned. He's uh, so concerned. And episode one was on launched on June 6th. And look it. I don't know if these numbers are real. But but let's just take a second. And and by the way, it's first episode. Everyone's curious. Nobody has really done the thing where they left uh you know traditional television, if, if you call it, you know, Fox traditional television, whatever you want to do. They went over. He's going to show his wares on Twitter on the show. It's got t- it's called Tucker on Twitter. Got a little logo here in the corner. Yeah. And as as we uh, record this on the eighth, uh, it has one hundred and three point three million watches. That's fairly impressive. And I know a lot of those are automatic, whatever. But let's just say that the five percent are real. If, uh, five million. Is yeah. amazing for this. That's better than, he was, do- it's better than he was doing on Fox. Yeah. 72,000 comments, yeah. 254,000 retweets. Um, and I don't know, Robert, if this is because, uh, you know, just the first two platform with this idea, but, but kudos. Um, I'm interested to see if this thing rolls. It's it, 10, it was 10 minutes and 27 seconds. He ends the pro. It, it's, it's a, it's a very Tucker esque 10 minute show. So if you like Tucker, you will love this. He goes in, a little bit of conspiracy, a little bit of they're not telling you anything, the whole thing. And at the end says, hey, as long as Twitter says that this is a a platform for everyone to share their views, we are going to stay here on Twitter. I I would imagine that he'll get 
some very juicy sponsorship offers to be part of this and yeah. show it in stream. Um, and, and frankly, for as a creator, if you think of him moving as an independent creator, it's fairly exciting to say he was a cog in the machine of, and he had to uh, go by all these different rules. And now he is outside of that now and can, and can do this from his home, which is, it seems yeah. to be in, in, a, in a rustic setting, a, a barn <laughs> of some kind a cabin in the woods, a cabin in yeah. the woods. It is. Yeah. It's, he, it, he should actually change his outfit to look more cabin esque. Yeah, so. I think. Well, he's got the. I, I thought. I thought. Are those pool cues behind him? I don't. I don't know. Anyway. I uh, yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. a pool table back yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, you know, here's the thing. Yeah. I if if you combine this with what we were just talking about with this subscribe idea, where you could subscribe to this show, um, and give him an email address and do that. Yeah. Hey, that's what we were talking about. You know, two months ago, that right. this could become a a, a viable platform. And a real content platform that uh, that enables, um, you know, that, that enables this. It, I it's, don't know. I, but here's the thing. This is different. If you look at, like I say, what is the best platform for creators? Like, where are most of the creators hanging out with? I think that that I would say TikTok. I think that yeah. a good, strong portion of the people that are on that platform. And they really cater to to creators. Twitter is is more like the 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 one percent right you have some very influential creators journalists if you ex journalists that are creating a lot of content and you have most of it is just people watching um if that's the way it's supposed to be there there's probably a business model for creators on that platform as well it's just a different yeah. kind of creator 100 percent. so yeah okay what do you got 100 okay very quickly here um i'm gonna uh so there's an article that i'll reference in the show notes from TechCrunch. Um, and it was basically uh, a Sam Altman as he was talking at an event. And he's basically saying that OpenAI is still not training GPT-5, um, which they really kind of bury the lead here because, as they say, OpenAI is not training GPT-5 months after the Microsoft-backed startup pledged to not work on the successor to GPT-4 for some time after many industry executives and academics started to express concerns. Uh, by the large language models. And as he said, the quote is, we've got a lot of work to do before we start that model, um, blah, blah, blah. We're working on the new ideas that we think we need for it, but we're certainly not close for it to start. So by the way, what's not getting said in that is if once they start training that model, it could take years, right? It could take, it could take you know, 18 months, 24 months to actually do the training. So if they haven't even started the training yet, we're at least, you know, I would suspect a year or two away from it being any kind of viability. The, the lead that I think they buried here in the commentary is, is that I don't think they're not doing it uh, because of the public pressure or the, all the concerns and the letters and the 22 word statement that we talked about last week. I don't think they're doing it for any of that. I think they're doing it because they've gotten to the point now where the size of the language model doesn't really matter that much anymore. It doesn't provide sort of exponential benefit um, they've gotten to about the size of the language model that they, that really makes sense. Now, other than incremental improvements to interface, incremental improvements to making it easier to make prompts, incremental increments to uh, safety and sort of tuning the model to basically be a little more conscious of you know going rogue, as it were. I think that's kind of it. So it's this. I've been using this analogy of. I think they released all this stuff in such a flurry starting in November through let's call it March or April of this year and got to zero to 80 in six months. And I think it's literally going to take, you know, two or three more years to get to 80 to 81. And even that won't be necessarily AGI, right? Which is the sort of everything, the, the thing that everybody's afraid of, which is sort of artificial general intelligence. And so I think it's time this is what this is my commentary, I guess, if you for for lack of a better word, is it's time for us to take a breath. It's time for us to take a, a collective breath and say, OK, here is where this could be useful. Here's where this is useful. Here's where this will be useful for some time. Um, and here's where it's not useful, quite honestly, and start to really understand how it's going to change the way we work, the way we consume information, the way we change and not be so breathless about having to get to a place where whatever's next, 
because I think we're, I think the technology development here is going to slow considerably. Um, and that I, I think that is it's a good time for us to take this pause. It's a good time for us to take this idea and say, what will this mean from a regulation standpoint, from a oversight sort of standpoint? And I think it's just this is sort of to me, this is the squawking of the canary in the coal mine to say this is, you know, Altman saying basically, hey, we're not even thinking about this right now. So maybe you should start to take a pause here instead of going, ah, oh, we can't take any action because what's next? What's going to come next tomorrow? And, you know, so instead of using the excuse of the new technology, the new bright, shiny thing as a means of saying we can't deal with this yet because we need to know what's next. Other words, take that energy and say, no, this is a good time for us to pause and really put some good nuanced thinking into this. That's my, that's my comment. I think that your 80 to 81 comment is true. I mean, I think that will happen. I, I also, but I think that most, at least in the marketing and content space, ev everyone is just trying to go in and figure out how, how this can positively change their business. Yeah. I, I think most people are taking, and then you have some people running around like a chicken with their head cut off. That's right. And it's I, a little and, bit of a, it's a little bit of a barbell, right? You know, you've got the very extremes going, ah, just sort of throwing everything at it. And then you've got others that are going, you know, I know a lot of my clients are, they're not allowed to use it. They're simply not, you know, they're doing it on their phones and stuff and routing around and playing with it there. Yeah. But for their internal IT departments, they're just not even allowed to use chat GPT or anything like it because of the fear of copyright, the fear of safety, the fear of proprietary information, getting out all of those kinds of things. I, I, I've been using it as a gut check and it's fairly like read this. Does this sound right? And I actually talk to it like it's my little assistant. Hey, here's a, yeah. something I wrote. Can you just check this over and let me know what you think? Uh, I'm sorry. I've been using one of the I've been yeah. using one of the paid tools um, that are out there. I won't say which one, but 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 the I've been using and it's been really lovely. It's been great. It's been a great help because it'll do things like yeah. actually I can send it URLs and say give me a summary of this URL, give me a summary of this article, and send it you know, all sorts what? of URLs and, and have it do things for me and then save those things. And it's, and it, it's, it's, it's nice and it's, and it's not expensive. So why don't um, you talk yeah. to that company and say that you will, and if they sponsor this old marketing that you will say who it is, that's why don't you do that. <laughs> probably should. I probably By the way, should. since we, what, this, this is a very long episode. We keep getting, yeah. we're going to, I don't know if, if our listeners are, are going, are just tuning out by the hour mark or they're, I, I don't know. This is this is new. We've never yeah. done a show. Well, this long. it's the video. I think the video is sort of throwing us off a little bit. And so normally we we would we would be a little tighter on this stuff. But <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. OK, our show is going to be. Yeah, we're going to go into Joe Rogan like two hours and 30 minutes. Sometimes these shows. Oh, that's no on. good. Yeah, nobody. Nobody needs that. In nobody. Their life. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody All said right, we what's... need a longer this old marketing show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What? So what do you got this week? um oh, a couple graduation parties uh more oh, beautiful nice. weather in in cleveland ohio um there's somebody's birthday today ah. so we're going out and celebrating that tonight so not my birthday okay somebody else in this house's birthday <laughs> um but yeah so we're just it, it this is this time of year this is why people live in cleveland all the other times yeah. they're like get out they want to go somewhere else but this is real the, the weather we've had for the last five weeks it's been 75 and perfect uh and it's just it's been lovely so we've been nice. kayaking been doing all kinds of stuff how about you nice uh we're again with the weather yeah we're having a lovely spring early summer as well it's it's normally hot here by this time of year and it's not been hot at all so we're in the high 60s and early uh, low 70s so it's it's uh it's been a lovely lovely way to get outside so that's that's been fun and then yeah client work all the stuff hashtag all the things working on a couple of new classes for a, a big new uh, course that i'm creating when does your so book when does your book come out book comes out in september and i've okay. been reading through the galleys and uh, doing yeah the i, I and... can tell you right now it's going to be a very exciting release i i i've gotten I... an early look at it and i must say yes thank it's you very good. much for it's for your good. wonderful kind words yes. yes i've been getting some blurbs on it and so that's been that's been lovely so yeah working on a little bit of that as well and uh yeah generally just uh living the dream as it were. All right. All right. All, all right. right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. We really appreciate, appreciate you watching, listening, however you're consuming our wonderful show. And of course, get on over there and, and let us know what you think and, and, and all those kinds of things. Leave us a voicemail. And until we see you next week, just remember everybody, it's your story to tell, tell it well.
We'll see you next week on This Old Marketing.